I've said fairly consistently that four hours of independent study a week is a, is a good minimum. Um, and for those doing three subjects, you should be able to do that in school. Um, and um, so what I've proposed here is a structure that gives you one, two, three, four hours of independent study a week. One hour will always be doing your homework and the additional questions that I say, can you do this for the next lesson? Uh, one of those we'll do in a minute. But then I'm proposing that you structure your revision for your mock around statistics, mechanics and pure. Now, it's not one third, one third, one third in terms of the exam, is it? Because you've got one exam on pure, so that's half, and then you've got uh, you know, one sixth on, sorry, no, it's a half and a half, which is a half. In, in the final exam, it's two thirds and one third, but in this exam, this is a half and this is a half, so it's a quarter and a quarter. Um, but what I've done is I've, using the maths genie wording, I've pointed you to a number of year one statistics and mechanics topics, including hypothesis testing. I looked again at the paper, and yes, hypothesis testing. So I'm proposing that you work through those in those weeks. Um, and at the same time, I will put, I'm not going to do revision lessons, but I will do the odd revision starter just to sort of nudge you and encourage you along the way in the relevant week. So we'll do some sampling and large data stuff revision next week. Um, you'll notice that some weeks uh, have gaps um, and you know that may mean you can get ahead in other areas. This is half, this is the old one, sorry, sorry, this is out of date. I'm gonna, I will make sure I email you the correct one. I thought that saved it. Um, sorry, let me get my up-to-date version. I should, Oh dear, sorry. I've got uh, half terms in the wrong week. Is that one? Is that right? I've got it right here. Right, yes, I've got it. Um, yep, yeah, sorry, I've got it right in this one. So, um, your we got after this week three more weeks and then you've got half term, then you've got one week, then you've got the two weeks of the mock, so actually your maths exams are both in the second week. Um, so there you go. So you've got some sampling in blue, some stats in blue, sorry, some mechanics in red, and recent stuff that we've done for pure in green, although I've thrown in differentiation integration for two reasons. I know that's year one, but I will put a differentiation integration question in the mock, and also that is, in, is necessary for that. So it sort of all does, dovetails together. Um, binomial expansion and radians, that's topics we have yet to do, but we will get through those two by half term. So a half term, I'll say, right, that's it, we'll draw a line. The mock will only be on the topics we've covered to that point. Uh, and that's a complete list. So it's not like I've only given you a few hints, that's a complete list. And then um, at Cool Maths Club, where we do hard sums, I haven't come up with a better name yet. I haven't printed the t-shirts just yet, so if you want to come up with a better name before I go to print, then please do. But yeah, um, please get into the habit of, you know, having a go on your own, and that includes my regular homeworks and everything else, having a go on your own, but then finding me out and saying, right, I can't do this one, I can't do that one. And yeah, we've got the opportunity this year to do it face to face, which is the way it's always been done. Last year was just this ridiculous year, wasn't it? Um, but you know, I've always spent my lunch times and after school, helping people out, please key into that, okay? So I will email this out to you. I'm not trying to stress you out. I'm trying to give you a structure which reduces that stress. Um, these are maths genie wordings, but I hope you can work out. So for example, you know, you want to do some more practice of mean and standard deviation. I hope you'll be able to work out where to find that in the year one book of a revision guide or whatever. Actually, Math Genie says F equals MA. I call it connected particles, they call it F equals MA. There we go. Excellent. I'll make sure I send you the right, the right version as well. Uh, so, while we're talking about um, independent study, here's the question that I asked you to look at, at, um, at uh, independently before 
today's lesson. And, and this is the last time, I haven't given you warning, this is the last time that I'm going to go through this one, because what I'm going to say from now on is I shall, I shall use a random name generator and pop out a name and say, come on, uh, George, or come on, Isabel, can you go through this with, with me? So, you know, I, I want to try and ramp up the importance of this, because I'm well aware some of you are reliably doing it, but I want to make sure everyone joins the gang and gets on board. So this was a, um, a number sequence. Um, so George, tell me what the first term in that number sequence would be. Um, uh, when R is 1. Uh, yeah, 11. Okay. And then, um, James, what would the second term in that sequence be? 14. So what we've got here is an arithmetic sequence where A is 11 and D is 3. How many terms in this sequence? It's K. Yeah, so N is K, that's right. And we're told that the sum of the first K terms is 377. Now we've got two versions for the sum of an arithmetic sequence, haven't we? Um, but we don't know the last term. We could actually work out the last term, it'd be in terms of k, but I'm going to use um, this version, because that's the version that doesn't need the last term. But I know that that's going to be equal to 377. So I'm hoping you've already done this, and you've got uh, k over 2, 22, k minus 1 times 3. You know me, I always start by doubling. And multiply that out as well. Uh, wonder what that is when you factorise it. Well, I'm hoping that it's that. I've definitely got a negative. Uh, 58 times 13, well, I know that 3 times 8 is 24, so yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. I'm going to get 39 k's and 20, uh, 58 k's. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, we're there. We're there. And solving that gives you the value of k. I mean, I haven't done it, but hopefully um, if you did it, you were able to solve it, you get a negative value of k. Well, k is the number of terms of the sequence, so it can't be that, and you get 30, which is the correct answer. Good stuff, good stuff. So these were these um, uh, sigma notation described sequences. Um, let's just do one more of these trickier questions. Um, let's have a look at question 12. Um, I should give out books, then you can have a look at it yourself. Um, so, yeah, question 12, so this is still on that same page 78 for those that aren't here. I, I think we need to uh, challenge the, the sort of fear that we feel when we see something like this. It looks a bit scary because there's lots of missing things, lots of letters. Um, but I'm hoping you can do the first bit because we did a question very much like this yesterday when we were doing sums to infinity. Um, and then I'm hoping that you can um, see the link between this and this. Have a go, have a little go. Sorry, page 78, page 78. So for those that aren't here, I'm just gonna let the camera run. 
and you can just fast forward through the gaps or pause and fast forward. So. So Jody, what's what's R in this sequence? It's, it's yeah, three x. Yeah, R is three x. And Lily, just remind me what the condition is for a sequence to be convergent. What do I know about the value of R? So so what we're saying is that three x has got to be between minus one and one. So x has got to be between minus a third and one third. And, and I note with interest that that's the second time we've had a question like that. We had minus 2x yesterday. Seems to be quite a popular question. So that's all they want for A. Three marks for that. That seems like quite a generous mark allocation. And the second part of the question is really easy as well because this sequence here is actually this sequence. When r is 1, you get 3x to the power of 0, which is 1. And when r is 2, you get 3x to the power of 1, which is 3x. And when r is 3, you get 3x to the power of 2, which is 9x squared. So they're talking about this sequence here. And we've just said, well, I know what this sequence looks like. a is 1 and r is 3x. I also know that it's convergent, so it has a sum to infinity. And I know that the formula, hi there. Uh, come on in, join the fun. Were you looking sharp, James? I hope so. Um, so all, all, all we need to work out is uh, plug in those numbers and make it equal to 2. That's all. Plug in those values there, make it equal to 2, and solve it to work out what x is. Go on, see if you can bring that one home for me. So in part B, it's the same sequence, and they're telling me what the sum to infinity is. That's what this is saying. The sum to infinity is 2. We know there's a simple formula for the sum to infinity. Um, so it's just about making A over 1 minus R. So I've videoed the first part of the lesson, James, um, just so you, can, uh, you don't miss out. So I, the sum to infinity is 2. That's all it's telling me in that second part. So I know the formula for the sum to infinity, which if I plug in the values from this sequence, give me that, make it equal to 2, hate fractions, blah, 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 x is 1, 6. Um, I wanted to do that question because I think it looks quite scary because of all this stuff. And I, you know, we mustn't be afraid of those sorts of questions. We've got to be willing to, to leap in. And today, with today's work, we're going to do in a minute, there's more 
scary looking stuff, which actually when you get to the nub of it, isn't really as scary as it looks. Right, so we've talked about um, sigma notation to describe sequences. There's one other way that sequences are described, and that's using recurrence relationships. Wow, that sounds really impressive, doesn't it? Come on in. Oh, no, you'll be fine. Well, just. It's Pat, look, it's Pat, it's Pat. Well, I'm videoing it for you and James, and, uh, but there was, uh, actually, Tegan's not here either. So, hi, Tegan, that was Pat. So, I will just, I will email you the link to the video, Pat, just so you can see the first few minutes. In particular, I've talked about revision for the mock, and you'll get something in your inbox, which um, it just explains what that is. Right. So I think, a bit like that last question, recurrence relationships are examples of things which look a bit scary, but which really aren't, and we just need to sort of get over our, our fear of them. Um, on page 80, you'll see this exercise. Um, get your book um, And I just want to cut through what this looks. So this is page 80, and we're looking at question uh, one. Um, these are recurrence relationships. All this is saying, and we know that U is the way we talk about terms. U1 is the first term, U2 is the second, U3. So this is saying the next term is equal to the current term plus three. That's all, it's, that's all it means. The next term, un plus 1, the one after the current term, is equal to the current term, plus 3. Wherever you are in the sequence, the next term will be equal to the current term, plus 3. Uh, and so the only other bit of information we need to know is a term. And normally they'll tell us the first term. This sequence is impossible to write down unless you know the first term, or a term in the sequence. So 1a is just, the first term is 1, the next term is that term plus 3. The next term is that term plus 3. So something that looks a bit scary, but which actually isn't. Just, I know we don't often do a whole question, but just whiz through and do those other ones for me. Just the first four terms in those sequences. Seven plus three. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. I'm pleased you're on your toes, though, George. That's good. I've failed again. I've ordered these and they've refused to sell them to me. Um, so I've now ordered them from Amazon. So they. I'm hoping you can order them. Um, oh, some of you already bought them. Yeah, I've got one already. So well done. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. gives you the first term and it just says the next term is that term with something done to it and then the next term well it's something 
Again, recurrence means the same operation is recurring throughout the sequence. You're taking that term and doing something to it. That recurs again and again and again. And, and you'll see that recurrence relationships can be used to describe both arithmetic and geometric series. Um, <coughs> And also some which are neither. Uh, if you're well ahead of me, four or five would be the other two ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just I will show you the answers for those. If, sorry if you haven't already done done them. So the first couple are arithmetic. Then you get a geometric, um, and uh, but you know we will come across some which are which are neither. Um, F, for example, is yeah. So some sequences can only be described. Well, no, actually, no, it's not true. But some sequences are best described using the current relationships because they don't fall into a pigeonhole of arithmetic or geometric. I think four is an excellent example of a question which just looks horrible, but which actually isn't that hard. So again, I'm going to get you to puzzle over it just for a couple of minutes. But, um, trying to find a balance between helping people who haven't got a clue where to go and, and leaving those of you who want to have a go. Let me just um, start you off. So if the first term is 3, 
the next term is k that I don't know, k times 3 plus 2. Which we would normally write as 3k plus 2. Does it matter if I write k3? It's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> What about they'll say, they'll look at it and they'll go, yeah, drama student. That's, that's what they'll do. They'll <laughs> no, it wouldn't be incorrect. You'd be okay. Actually, you, you'd be okay. But don't start doing it as a habit, please. Just, just to be quirky. That's it. Um, the, the, next, the next term, and this is, I think the next one is tricky. The next term is k, which we still don't know, times the previous term. So it's k times this. Plus two. <laughs> and I'm going to multiply that out. So I get 3k squared plus 2k plus two. It's happy then, isn't it? We're then told that's 42, so line it up and solve it. Bob's your uncle. Let's go. Have a go at five as well. So Scary question, which perhaps isn't that scary when you get down to it. Next term is equal to k times the previous term plus 2. That's all we're saying. And, and k isn't, the, isn't the, the term number, is it? So it can be positive or negative, so that's why it's values rather than value. There's always going to be other bits in the question, like this n is greater than or equal to 1, that, that just, you know, they go there, but they don't really change anything, do they? And we've just got to make sure we're just not spooked by them. They're just saying that n will be start at 1 and get bigger. Two, two missing values in number five, but they tell us about two terms, so hopefully we're buckling up here for a simultaneous equation question. But all it's saying is the next term is P, which we don't know, times the current term, plus Q, which we also don't know.
Jesus Christ. Two P, not two P. Two P, not two P. Drama students. So, okay, um, the first term is 2. So, Pat, giving me something that involves P's and Q's, can you give me what the second term would be? Um, 2P plus Q. Fantastic. Unless you're George, in which case you presumably put P2 plus Q. Uh, well done. Yeah, well done. Now, the next term is fiddly, isn't it? Because it's P times that term plus Q. So, Isabel, what does that give you? Um, oh. Oh, I just did. I worked it out. All oh, right. I just I did it differently. Okay, okay. Well, it, so you get the next term will be p times the current term plus q. Okay, which I'm going to mark by two p. Actually, no, I'm not going to mark. Uh, and the question tells me that two p plus q is minus one, and this, which I'm going to leave as this. is 11. So I, I, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to solve it my way and then I might ask you to explain your way as well. Okay. Um, can anyone see a really doing it my way, a really easy thing I can do at this point? Well look, I know that 2p plus q is minus 1. Oh. Yeah, probably should. <laughs> Well, yeah, do you know what? I, for, you can be forgiven for times it out. And you can still solve it by times it out because you can rewrite this as P equals or Q equals. But it's just much harder. Because then if you then combine that with this equation, so I've, I've ch changed that one into that. If I then combine it with this one, well, I've, I've got one that I can solve using my calculator in its simultaneous equation. But also, I mean, come on. Back to GCSE, what's changed going from here to here? I've added three P's, and that's made my total go down by 12. So P's minus 4. And uh, minus 4 plus something is 11. Minus 4 plus 7. Oh, hang on, no, no, hang on. Uh, minus minus 4, which is plus 4. 4 plus something is 11, yeah, so. So I just substituted minus 4 into that equation then at the end. Minus minus 4 is plus 4, plus Q is 11. Now, you, you could have got the same answer by um, Yes. Mark applying it out, you would have ended up with a quadratic, same answer. So Isabel, just... Uh, do, uh, well, I just, um, I just did minus, straight away, I just did minus 1 equals 2p plus q, because I knew that <clears throat> the last one was 2, so I just put right, yeah, that yeah. into the... So straight away, you, so you went straight to here, yeah? Yeah, and then I just worked out the other one. Oh, right, okay, it. okay. So, and did you, did you straight away... Uh, do minus one times p. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, I think recurrence relationship questions look really scary, but I'm not sure. Okay, that was a bit fiddly, but I'm not sure we've done any particularly hard sums. Certainly not as hard as we have done in in other areas of math. So, don't be afraid. Sequence questions are often. I'm not going to say the word easy, but amongst the more accessible marks on, on a paper. Just to finish, when does this lesson end? Right. Still got plenty of time, good. Just to finish with sequences then, um, we've described sequences in a number of different ways, arithmetic, geometric, but there is another way that sequences can be described. They can be increasing, hopefully that's fairly obvious. They can be decreasing, hopefully that's fairly obvious. And again, I mean, what a ridiculous way of writing it. A sequence is increasing if the numbers get bigger. Yeah. 
That's an increasing sequence. I mean, yes, if we want to make ourselves feel important, we can write it like this. This means natural numbers, counting numbers, so n is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Um, and you know, the sequence is decreasing if the numbers always get smaller. That's all that's saying. But it's the periodic sequences that I want to talk about. A periodic sequence is a sequence where you get a pattern that repeats. So for example, this sequence here has a pattern that repeats. And the length of that repeating pattern is 2. So we say it's a periodic sequence with a period of 2. So this repeating pattern, 2, 1, 2, 1, sorry, minus 2, 1, minus 2, 1, minus 2, 1, is it gives us a periodic sequence with a period of 2. Um, and again, what a ridiculously overcomplicated way. I shouldn't have put that on the board, really, should I? Um, you know, a periodic sequence it just has a repeating pattern, and the length of that pattern is the order of the period. Sorry, it's the period. It's the period, not the order, it's the period. So can I just get you to look at a couple of definitions of periodic sequences? Um, so here's the first. Um, and then a second one um, remember n is a counting number, so it's going to start at 1 and get bigger. This one I don't give you the first term, because the first term is just cos of 180. So just see what you get with those sequences. It will always be you and plus 1. In the recurrence relationship, yeah, yes, I think yes, yes, it will have to be, won't it? Yeah. And if it was, if it was U n plus two, it would just like second. Yeah, if it was U n plus two, then you, you you wouldn't be able to work out all the terms in the sequence, would you? There'd be a gap. I suppose if they if they told you that, yeah, no, it's always going to be N plus one. Um, and as a little addition, for this first sequence only, can you tell me the sum of the first 100 terms? Okay. Yeah. So that first sum of the first 100 terms. Which is not a complicated question.
So, um, cos of 180n, so that's cos of 180, which is minus 1, and then cos of 360, which is 1, and that's going to be the same pattern as well. So that's periodic with period 2 as well. So Lily, give me a quick way of adding up the first 100 terms of the first sequence. So Lily's gone for the combining those two together, which add up to 5, and there'll be 50 of those repeated. Very good, yeah. So we've got 250. Um, an alternative would have been to say, well, I know in the first 100 terms, I'm going to have 50 20s and 50 minus 15s, so I could just work them out and then add them together, except obviously this will be negative, but, um, but yeah, but we'd get the same answer, we'd get 250 either way. So a recurrence relationship, it's sort of a, a, a way of describing relation, um, sequences which, um, well it can be used for arithmetic and geometric, but generally it's used for ones that are a bit more complicated. Um, and, uh, and and can give you in some circumstances these periodic sequences. Brilliant. Now I just very briefly want to return to the homework, not the homework for this week, which is due on Tuesday, but um, last week's homework. I'm going to mark yours next I'm really sorry, I haven't marked it yet. Um, um, but there was one question which I didn't go through yesterday, and on a number of your work, pieces of work, I said oh, I'll, I'll go through this one in class, and I I just didn't, and it was this question here, um, um, where you had to say the range of this function. So you did a bit of simplifying, and that was all done really well, and you had to show that the function was actually that, but then you had to say the range of it, which is the y values. Now I always say to find the range, sketch the function and have a look at it. So can I get you all to just Get your calculators into graph mode and just to sketch that function, um, just so we know the shape that we're dealing with here. Um, I note that they tell us the domain of the function is that x is always bigger than 3. So you get something that looks like this, except this is the function for any value of x, and I'm told that actually x is only going to be bigger than 3, so actually I've got open dot there, this is the only bit of the function that is I'm interested in. So the y values, well, the biggest y value I'm going to get, well, it can't actually be that value, but when 
x is 3, if I plug that into the function, uh, I get 4 over 1, 4 over 1 is 4, so I know that this value here is 4, so I know that my function is always going to be less than 4, but where does it disappear down to? It looks like it's an, got an asymptote, but is it going to disappear down to 0, or is it going to stop at some other value? And to work that out, certainly on your calculators, it's really tricky to see. We've really got to look at the function and say, OK, let's imagine x gets really, 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 really big. A really, 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 really big number plus 1 is about the same, isn't it? It doesn't really change it if you add 1 to a really, really, really big number. And a really, 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 really same really, really, really big number, take away 2, is still going to be pretty much the same really, 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 really big number. What happens if you take a really, really, really big number and divide it by the same really, really, really big number? Something divided by itself? So what that means is this graph is going to get close to, but never actually reach 1. So the range of that function was 4. And I have a horrible thing on a couple of people's, I might have corrected them for that, and actually you were right if you put less than, because it can't be equal to 4. But the key was that it had to be between 1 and 4. Now, um, Joe asked me, he said, well, how would you do that without the calculator? Well, it would be pretty tricky. So let's make sure we make sure make the best of that advantage. We've still got to do a little bit of work ourselves. The calculator doesn't give it all to us, but there we go. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. So for next lesson, and gentlemen, for those uh, having a photo taken, I, I said, from next lesson, I'm going to use a random name generator to ask people to uh, do these questions. So these are questions that I'd like to have a go at with me on uh, the beginning of next lesson. They're just a couple of recurrence relationship questions. Just to... Uh, no, make a note of it now. I'm not going to put it through. You need to do more work. You need to do the work. Thank you. But I will send you the revision list. I will send you the revision list.